Kosta, Mabuhai, Magandanga and welcome back to MGN Diego. Arobo Siovela, and today we will be reacting to a special video that I put aside. You guys actually requested this a long time ago, but I wasn't in the mood to react to it because I feel like it's a pretty heavy topic, and I say that because. It's a video that talks about how apparently uh, the, Filip the Philippines or Filipinos saved uh, the Jewish people during the Holocaust, according to you guys. So yeah, it's a pretty heavy subject. So I thought I will react to it when I'm ready. And I feel like today is the day. But before we start, please consider following me on Instagram at Music Game News. And before we start, I'm going to read the title of this video. It's called An Open Door Jewish Rescue in the Philippines. There you go. All right, without further ado, let's get to it. Jewish rescue in the Philippines. Okay. What do they mean by the Jewish rescue in the Philippines? Like they saved Jewish people in the Philippines? Or they migrated to the Philippines? Mm, love the music. Holocaust survivor, there you go. For those of you who don't know, the Holocaust is a dark, dark time in uh, the history of Jewish people. You know, it took place mainly in, uh, in Germany, if I'm not mistaken. We would go to the park nearby and we would, by the time we were five, we would see benches that would say, dogs and Jews not allowed. Man, that's so wrong. And couldn't quite understand what all this was about. Basically, it reminds me of, you know, when in the US, you know, black people could not share the same bathroom as white people, or black people had to sit in the back of the bus or something like that, you know what I mean? When Hitler came to power in 1933, I was two years old. And um, my father, being the chairman of the Socialist Party in Cologne, which was one of the two parties that opposed the Nazis, uh, the Communist Party being the other one, was accused by the Nazis of having murdered two Nazis. In my mind, concentration camp, I knew it was a terrible place, and we would most likely be killed there. So yeah. it was fear, terrific fear. And um, we were, so we started hiding. We were told that there was basically a man in government who was an anti-Semite and who was very antagonistic towards the Jews. Horrible, horrible times. We take the train home and very often there were kids waiting for us uh, older kids uh, as we came out of the train station and they started running after us eight kids hmm. and throwing stones at us and calling us dirty Jews. So I became a very fast runner. In 1937, <laughs> You're gonna have to. Um, a group of Nazis came to the door with a German shepherd oh, damn. and uh, wanted to see about the Jewish books. And my dad had quite a library. The dog frightened me terribly. It was a big police dog. And they took the books. There were a fair number amount of Jews living in that apartment house. They took all these books, took them into the backyard of the apartment building. And there was a whole pyre that mm. was built and, and the basically burned all those books. In a world turned upside down. Uh, 
Ay, ay, ay. They took my, the German citizenship away from my mother, my father, and myself. So now we were stateless. My dad was arrested and was arrested in the Breslau Town Hall. I like my his coat. told me that, uh, told my brother and I that uh, my dad was away on a trip, on a, on a business, business trip. trip. yeah. Really never divulged that he was, had been arrested and, uh, but cried bitterly and we couldn't understand why she was mm. crying. My father was told by the Nazis that he had to sell, get rid of all his houses. He could only take a hundred marks out. A hundred marks? The Is that the, the uh, laws. And the currency? Depriving all German Jews of their German citizenship. This that enabled then the, the government to confiscate businesses, to confiscate homes, to appropriate all their assets. It was not a physical extermination, but it was a social annihilation hmm. because it, it annihilated their place in the social fabric of German society and treated them as non gratis as foreign enemies living among society. My father's family left Germany in 1939, so it was late. And in fact, my father's uncle, Walter, uh, with whom he was very close, was actually taken by the Nazis um, and, and killed in a concentration camp. Hmm. Um, they were well-educated German Jews who believed that this was not going to affect them. When we got this telephone call, we packed our bags, we left within an hour, and all of our furniture, everything else, pots, pans, dishes, whatever was in the kitchen, we left behind. Well, of course. And um, we never went back there. I thought any minute they're gonna stop the cars and send us off to a concentration camp. A new law oh my god, around. that gave me chills when she said concentration camps, man. Whew. And have you noticed? They haven't said anything about the Philippines yet. That German uh, Aryans were not to go to uh, Aryans. Jewish physicians. Or not be so that's how it's called in English, because in French they call it la race Aryan. So I guess it's the same thing. Basically, it's uh, German people who are blonde. You know, that's how uh, they defined them to us when I was in high school. Yeah, like uh, Hitler wanted the German to look like big, tall, uh, blonde people with blue eyes, basically. Treated by Jewish physicians anymore. And then my father realize that the time is up and he should better start looking around for another country to take him. Mm -hmm. When we boarded the ship, it was, it was a bit exciting for me. It was sort of an adventure and I felt somewhat secure. I had my brother there, I had my parents there. I know I was going to a new country, but it was somewhat exciting. Going to the Philippines! A Philippine president with his Jewish and American allies finds a way to set it right! Yeah! Which Filipino president? Ah, there you go! Manuel L. Quezon, President Philippine Commonwealth. Alright! Quezon, like most Filipinos, was Catholic. And yet, he developed an affinity for Jews because he felt that there was a sort of a symbolic brotherhood between, between Filipinos and Jews. That is, that as the Filipinos were, were the recipients of racial discrimination and bigotry on the part of many Americans mm -hmm. at that time, that the Jews were similarly the recipients of, of bigotry by the Nazis. Yeah. And so even though Quezon had extremely important and critical political and economic... I guess he could relate to them, you know, and that's why he decided to help. ...issues to wrestle with at this time. He was willing to take a stand to help the Jews. Nice. 
My father applied to the Philippines but didn't know at all where it was, what it was. All he knew was it was somewhere in the Pacific. <clears throat> so he looked up his encyclopedia, uh, which was published in 1898, we found out later. And um, he read that this was a, uh, an island discovered, uh, or a set of islands, 7,000 islands oh, yeah. discovered by Magellan. Uh, it's under the Spanish crown. Spanish was the national language. So naturally, we immediately started studying Spanish. Mm -hmm. When we got to the Philippines and we're staying in the boarding house where there are all sorts of different pe people, uh, Filipinos, mestizos, Caucasians, etc. I didn't never made, to me, there was never any distinction. To me, they were all people. And to this day, I feel that way. But uh, it was never a distinction to me. And I was very impressed because we rode up Dewey Boulevard into Pasay, mm -hmm. and it's a lovely beach, lovely beaches. Of course. Uh, beautiful, uh, the banana trees. I cannot explain. I cannot wait to experience the Filipino beaches, man. And uh, there were the, the polo wow. grounds, I remember. That footage is old. One of the we did fairly often was go to the movies. And there were uh, half a dozen good movie theaters in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. The Lyric, the Ideal, the Gaiety Theater. I would say we probably went to the movies maybe once every couple of weeks. The nice. games that we played was mostly Sipa. Sipa is... Uh, it's a uh, metal, it's a round metal thing with uh, strips of, of uh, paper, I believe, and you kick it with your leg. And the one who could kick it the oh. most, of course, was the winner. When you saw how the doors were basically closed to all of us except the Philippines, and how the Filipino people are a very warm people, mm. Mm. they're a very friendly people. Absolutely. Very welcoming. You know, songs, and um, there were quite a few performances. Uh, art was very important. And Filipinos have very, very good voices. The best. I wonder how long they lived in the Philippines, these Jewish people. My father spoke often of his Maybe they Filipino still live there. And recounted things that were these small moments, but clearly moments that for him were they all stuck about with him. friendship and happiness and something that was very uh, lighthearted. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you can explain that, but war looms over the horizon, yeah. As we were sleeping in the middle of the night, the house was shaking as if there was an earthquake, everybody woke up. So we ran outside and stood in the street while the houses were shaking. But there were these large booms, booms, booms. Uh, it turned out that we were being bombarded by the Japanese. Oh, damn. Like daily air raids. They were awful. It's like they cannot catch a break, man. Seriously. It was groups of four, four, and four, which you could barely see. Uh, exceedingly well trained. And of course they bombed at random. And it was a very frightening experience. Wow. I got, I'm getting like chills right now. It's so scary. Shortly thereafter, all of our friends that were either American, Canadian, British, or French, <coughs> which were the allies, enemies of the Japanese, mm -hmm. uh, were rounded up by the Japanese and interred at Santa Tomas. The irony of this is that these refugee Jews from Germany and Austria who had passports identifying them as German Jews are not arrested by the Japanese. The Japanese don't care if they're Jewish. Mm. 
they have a German passport, that means that they are an ally, and they are not arrested, and they are not interned or incarcerated. Oh, damn. <laughs> I, I really did not want to leave. That was my home. That was all I, that I knew. I was there from the time I was seven. I was there for almost nine years. Mm. And, and that was my home. Manila reception for Jewish refugees, April 1940, Frieder residence. Hmm. For me, the Philippines uh, it may not be my motherland, but my adopted motherland. Yeah. Because if it had not been for it, I would not be the person that I am now. Mm. Roosevelt and Churchill saved Western civilization. But Quezon, and so few people know that, President Quezon of the Philippines, saved 1,200 Jewish souls. Okay. As many as Schindler, maybe even more. Wow. And, and that is the, the epitome, basically, of Judaism. It says if you save one soul, you save mankind. Beautiful saying. Wow, okay, well there you have it guys. Um, Quezon, the Filipino president, saved 1,200 Jewish people. And that's a lot, man. Wow, see, I had no, I had no clue, I had no clue. And I have to tell you something. As an Arab, you know, Algerian, um, I grew up in an environment where uh, Jewish people were not liked because of what was happening at the time between the US and, you know, uh, the countries uh, like uh, Afghanistan, Iraq and everything. And, you know, I was I was pretty young and I was told that, you know, the, the, the people that control basically the state, the, uh, the United States are Jewish people. And they're the ones who are uh, ruining those, uh, you know, Muslim Arab countries. But the thing is, not every Jewish, uh, not the entire Jewish community is not the same. You know, you can't uh, judge people because of what uh, a few of them have done in the past, you know? We're all different people. There are good Jewish people, there are bad Jewish people. There are good Arab people, there are bad Arab people. You know, there are good Christians, bad Christians. You, you, you see what I'm saying here. So, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I absolutely have nothing against Jewish people and I think it's amazing what uh, the, the, the Philippines have done for Jewish people. I think it's horrible, horrifying what happened with uh, Germany, Hitler, the Holocaust, the concentration camps. That stuff should never happen, ever, ever, ever. And we just need to promote po uh, you know, uh, positive vibes, positive energy. If we can, of course, especially during times like this with the pandemic and everything, you know, we need to be helpful. We need to smile more. We need to be kind towards one another. And yeah, uh, I've been told many times from the people that went to the Philippines that the, the, the sensation that they get is that uh, heart lightedness, lightenedness, you know? They can't really describe it, but it's like, it comes with the fact that Filipinos are very welcoming, very warm, very positive, very happy, very... And I guess they take things lightly, you know? They don't try to complicate life. And I can feel that just through YouTube, you know, and through social media when I talk to you guys. So I can only imagine how it's gonna feel when I finally visit the Philippines. Oh man, it's going to be, uh, I think, an emotional experience for me to be honest because it's been what i'm going to, this is almost the fifth year that i've been uh you know reacting to filipino content it's a long time without actually having uh had direct contact with uh, the, the community you know so what i mean by that without having gone to the philippines so it's gonna be like a, a shock in a way you know oh <sighs> Well, this was a very interesting short uh, documentary in a way. 
Uh, let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on it. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you so much for joining me as usual. Take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Stay safe because health is the most important thing. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you for watching. Subscribe here and please like the video to show your support and appreciation for my work and turn on the notification bell to be boxed for future content. Yeah, yeah, yeah.